the everyday life of Abraham Lincoln, the year 1809, that year which gave William E. Gladstone to England, was in our country the birth year of him um, when wears the most distinguished name that has yet been wrote on the pages of American history. The author is considering removing the dashes in the underlying portion, should he do so. So here are my main sentences. The year 1809 was in our country the birth year of him. So obviously I need those dashes. So I look at a no answer. Uh, the dashes emphasize the modifier or they serve to break from the flow of the passage to introduce new ideas. Okay. Um, the year 1809 was in our country, the birth year of him, that year which gave William Gladstone to England. Uh, I don't think they break from the passage, right? So I'll go with C. Uh, in our country, the birth year of him, who wears, right? Because I am talking about a person, so I have to use who. Who wears the most distinguished name that has yet been written on the pages of American history? That has yet been written, right? On the pages of American history, Abraham Lincoln, in a quaint cabin in a clearing, in the wilds of that section, which was once the hunting ground and later the battlefield of the Cherokees and other warlike tribes in which the Indians ourselves had named Kentucky because it was dark and bloody ground, the great war president of the US first saw the light in a quaint cabin. Crudeness. Uh, crudeness. Quaint is doesn't have a negative connotation, so I would not go with that. Crude, I think, would have to go with primitive. Uh, because uh, crude is something which is uh, not very refined, right? And in this case, I think primitive would make the best sense. Uh, and which the Indians themselves, right? Because I'm talking about Indians, so the emphasis will be themselves. Uh, after whose name history has written the word emancipator, first saw the light, born and nurtured in penury, inured to hardship, coarse food and scanty clothing. The story of his youth is full of pathos. Um, so youth, I'm talking about these hardships, right? So I would go with pathos because pathos indicates, um, right, in, in the sense of, you know, having suffered, so pathos would be a good answer. Triumph is uh, victory. So that wouldn't be right here because here we are talking about penury and all that. So small wonder that when asked in his later years to tell something of his early life, he replied by quoting a line from Gray's Elegy, the short and simple annals of the poor. The author is considering deleting the underlying sentence. No, definitely I want to keep the sentence because this emphasizes the fact that his youth was, uh, you know, it was spent in poverty. So it should be kept because it provides details about the preceding sentence. It's not a contradiction, right? So it's A. Lincoln's ancestry has been traced with tolerable certainty through five generations to Samuel Lincoln of Norfolk County, England, not many years after the landing of the Mayflower at Plymouth. Uh, perhaps in the year 1638, Samuel Lincoln's son Mordecai had uh, dashed to Hingham, Massachusetts, so emigrated because he went from England to the US, so emigrated would be the best answer. Perhaps although he was a Quaker, a then persecuted sect, he did not remain long at Hingham but came westward as far as Berks County, Pennsylvania. Perhaps because he was a Quaker, right? It was a persecuted set and, sect, and so he did not remain long at Hingham. Um, his son, John Lincoln, went southward from Pennsylvania and settled in Rockingham County, Virginia. Later in 1782, while the last events of the American Revolution were in progress, Abraham Lincoln, son of John and grandfather of President Lincoln, moved into Kentucky and took up a tract of government land in Mercer County. Um, 
Okay. Abraham Lincoln enters 500 acres of land. Uh, at this time, Kentucky was, the pioneers of Kentucky cleared small spaces and erected their humble dwellings. They had to contend not with only, not only with the wild forces of nature, but to defend themselves from the beasts of the forest, more to be feared than either then okay they had to contend not only with the wild forces of nature but to defend themselves from the beasts of the forest either they had to contend not only with this okay so but okay contend not only with more to be feared than either were the hostile Indians. Yeah, so it has to be but here. So B, the settlers were filled with terror of those stealthy foes. It was such experiences as these that made of the pioneers the sturdy men they were. Their senses became sharpened. He was naturally a man of considerable genius. He is one who knew him. Uh, sense of danger, right? Uh, Dwellings. Yeah, so I'll go with A because that accentuates the sense of danger. Okay, let's create this. Uh, literacy one, passage one, C, B, D, C, B, C, B, D, C, B, number six, uh, A, A, B, D, B, A, 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 B, D, B, and A. 